Hi guys, it's Kristen from Kristen Moon Science. I wanted to hop on and share with you a fun experiment that I have my online kids do in chemistry, and that is measuring molecules in the kitchen. Chemistry gets a bad rap, and um, it is true that chemistry is one of the more harder sciences that the kids need to learn in high school. And I think that the reason ultimately comes down to the fact that in chemistry, we're dealing with atoms and molecules and chemical reactions that are taking place at a scale too small for us to really see. And that's why whenever you can, you should provide opportunities for your students to to do things that will help these abstract concepts make sense. And that is why I'm sharing this experiment with you because the experiment I'm sharing with you, you can do at home and it will help your students to understand what a mole is. And I'm not talking about the fuzzy mole that burrows underground or the mole on your face. I'm talking about the chemistry mole, a concept they're going to have to understand when they're talking about balancing equations and limiting reactions and stoichiometry and that type of thing. But the really awesome thing is that there are ways for your kids to measure molecules at home. The thing that you will need, though, is a little mask scale. So this is very, it's shiny. It's got stuff spilled on it. It's very well loved. I've had this for years and years and years. It's a mass scale. The thing that's important about it is that you need to make sure that it measures in grams for the activity that we're going to do today. Now, you can get these things on Amazon, at Home Science Tools. You can probably get them at the grocery store because um, something like this is um, it's used for hobbies, measuring things out. It's used in the kitchen um, for measuring out ingredients. So um, you're going to want to have a mass scale. But as long as you've got that, then you're going to be ready to do this experiment. All right, so let's talk about the mole. What is the mole? Okay, well, the mole, the chemistry mole, is a word that stands for a number. And we already are familiar with other words that stand for numbers. For example, if we said we had a pair of shoes or a pair of earrings, we know that pair means two. If we say we have a dozen eggs, you automatically know that that means we have 12 eggs because dozen is a word we're all familiar with that means 12. A less commonly used um, word that means a number is gross. A gross is 12 dozens or 144. Well, just like dozen, pair, and gross, a mole is just another word that means a number. It just so happens that the number that a mole means is very long and very large. It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So you can have a mole of shoes or a mole of eggs or a mole of pencils. You're just going to have a really big quantity of those. Um, that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, it's called Avogadro's number. And it's a number that once your kids use it enough times, it's going to be stuck in the recesses of their mind for the rest of their lives. And they will always be able to recall Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. But why on earth would we want to count that many of anything? Well, it turns out that when we're in chemistry, when we're talking about chemicals and chemical reactions, because atoms and molecules are so incredibly small, it doesn't take very much of it at all in terms of grams of mass to have an incredibly large number of atoms and molecules. And so the mole helps us to count um, seemingly not very much mass of things, but that contain a lot of, of atoms and molecules. Let me show you what I mean. It, you, we, the thing that's going to come in handy in figuring out these things is the periodic table. And I know we're all familiar with the periodic table. The periodic table, this is, in, this is not a fancy version. Um, this contains all 118 known types of elements. Um, some of them are natural. Some of them were made in the lab. Um, and you, they're, they're actually organized in a very sensible way that I actually love to teach about. But um, what you'll notice right away is that each block, which represents a different type of element, is listed with an element symbol. So shown here on the screen, this is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table. That's why it's got an atomic number of one, which also stands for its number of protons. It has one proton. The atomic mass, though, that's what we're going to talk about today. What is the atomic mass? 
just like the mass of anything, it's basically, we would say how much it weighs. So if you were somehow able to get a single atom of hydrogen and weigh it, it weighs 1.01, .01, but what unit? It is an atomic mass unit. It's a unit so small, it has its own unit for atoms, okay? So one atom of hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 .01 AMU. But the really cool thing is that same number, that same atomic mass, if we express that number in grams, that is how many grams it takes to have a mole of that element. So one atom of hydrogen weighs 1.01 .01 AMU, but one mole of hydrogen weighs 1.01 .01 grams. And what's so helpful about that is you're never going to be able at home to measure out 1.01 .01 AMU, one atom, but you 100% could measure out 1.01 .01 grams of something, and then you would know exactly how many atoms you had in that substance. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so this whole atomic mass You've got an atomic mass listed on the periodic table for all of the elements. Um, so carbon, for example, its atomic mass is 12. That means one carbon atom weighs 12 AMU, but one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. One mole of helium weighs four grams. One mole of beryllium weighs 9.1 grams. So why is this helpful? You're never gonna measure out one carbon atom. But could you measure out um, 12 grams of carbon? You absolutely could. You could order some carbon from a store, or if you have a pencil with lead, it's not really lead, the thing inside pencils that we write with is graphite, which is a form of carbon. So if you were able to like peel away the wood outside of pencils or get mechanical pencils and shoot out all of the graphite, from inside pencils. And if you were able to collect 12 grams of that, then in that 12 grams of graphite, of carbon, you would know exactly how many carbon atoms you had. You had to have a mole, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And that's really cool. And you don't have to stop at just the elements by themselves. Because when you combine different elements to make compounds and molecules, the same principle applies. So if you had salt, which just the regular salt that we use on our food, its chemical formula is NaCl, it's sodium chloride. And you could figure out using the periodic table how much one mole of salt weighs. Using the periodic table, we would see that one mole of sodium weighs 23 grams, one mole of chlorine weighs 35.5 grams, add those together and you find that one mole of sodium chloride or table salt weighs 58.5 grams. So it takes 58.5 grams of table salt to have a mole. And uh, since a mole of salt would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd salt molecules, if we are able to use our mass scale and our salt and measure out 58.5 grams of salt, we know exactly how many or molecules of salt we have. And we can do that in the kitchen. And I think that's incredibly cool. And just like if you have a dozen eggs and you know you have 12, if I say it, I want to buy two dozen eggs, you just say two times 12 is 24. You can do the same thing with the mole concept. So if we know that it takes 58.5 grams to have one mole, if we double that and we have 117 grams, then we know we have two moles and on and on and on. And you can do that with lots of different compounds that you already have in your house. So you can do it with salt. You can do it with baking soda. The chemical formula for baking soda is NaHCO3. That's one sodium, one hydrogen, one carbon, and three oxygens. So you just find those individual atomic masses from the periodic table, do the math. It's just, it's, it's bringing in kitchen, it's bringing in math, it's bringing in science. You can do this with water. Um, the water is, uh, it's got two hydrogens and one oxygen. So you find the molar mass of hydrogen, double it, the molar mass of oxygen, add that together, and you can do it with uh, water. You can find the molar mass of water. And then you can do it with hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. There's probably quite a few things that if we brainstormed, we could find 
around the house that are simple, pure substances that we could figure out their molar mass and then with your little mass scale, measure it. So I teach um, chemistry through Funda Funda and um, I'm just making sure that I'm sharing this. Okay. And um, even though I teach online, I really still want my students to get an opportunity to do some hands-on labs. So this is one of the experiments that I had my kids do. So this is just my scale. And even though it looks very messy, like I have measured things directly on the scale, I actually haven't. It's just been carted around so many times. I actually, you want to weigh out your substances on something else to, to protect the mechanisms inside your scale. So this is a weigh boat that you can buy from Amazon or Home Science Tools. You don't have to use a weigh boat. You can use a little piece of wax paper or a napkin. But when you put that on your scale, it's going to pick up the mass of that. So you're going to want to zero it out. And by the way, I'm measuring in um, um, grams. So then the next thing that you want to do is I just had my students take a tablespoon or a teaspoon, whatever, and measure out a tablespoon, roughly a tablespoon of salt. They did the same thing with baking soda and sugar, um, not sugar, water. And so then I put that in the weigh boat. Since I zeroed it out, it's only going to be weighing the salt. And I see that my mass is 20 grams. So now their challenge would be to figure out how many atoms or molecules of sodium chloride they have in that 20 grams of salt. Okay, so what would I do with that information? Well, you will recall from our last, from the slides, that for to have one mole of salt, I'm going to need 58.5 grams of salt. And I know that if I had one mole of salt, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd salt molecules, because that's what it means to have a mole. We measured that we had 20 grams of salt. Now, by the way, if I wanted to just measure a mole of salt, I could have just used my scale and my salt and weighed out 58.5 grams. But for this particular exercise, I wanted my students to actually figure out how much they measured out in their tablespoon. So that's why we're doing it this way. So 20 grams of sodium chloride. So do I have a mole? No, because it would have taken 58.5 grams of salt to have a mole. I have less than a mole, but let's figure out how much less I have. So it would take 58.5 grams of salt to have one mole of salt. So just plugging that in your calculator, I get that we have roughly 0.342 moles of salt. So if I don't have a whole mole, I don't have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of salt. How many molecules of salt do I have? Well, 0.342 moles. And if I had one mole, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So plugging that into my phone or your calculator, either will work. Um, so let me see, clear 0.342 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals 2.06 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So I hope that you can appreciate the power of that experiment because we just measured out 2.06 times 10 to the 23rd salt molecules. It looks just like a tablespoon of salt, but I actually know exactly how, well, not exactly, but very close to exactly how many molecules of salt I have. And I figured it out at home with a calculator and a mass scale and a tablespoon. And you can do the same thing with water and sugar and hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. And hopefully that will start helping your student to understand why we do this in the first place. And then that makes it easier then when they move on to stoichiometry and we start using mole ratios and relating one um, part of an experiment to the other and different masses together, why we're doing this. Because it all comes down to the mole and being able to measure molecules. I hope you found that helpful.